So good evening uh, to those in uh, to those in Europe and good morning to those in the US and other parts of the world and thank you so much for joining us on this webinar which we're going to have on the very exciting topic of golden visa and um we're also going to be talking about NHR because I know that's on everybody's minds at the moment. Um, I'm very, very happy to be here with uh, Jason from Holborn Assets. Jason has been on a number of Portugalist webinars and has spoken to a lot of Portugalist readers over the past couple of years about golden visas for a long time. One of the most popular routes to um, get residency in Portugal for people was through the golden visa and investing in hotels that were being redeveloped um, that as uh, Jason I'm sure will explain um, route has been has gone along with um, some of the other property routes that were popular but the golden visa has not gone I think um, there was a lot of announcements earlier this year that it was definitely going to go and there was um, it seems like that um, just uh, one or two parts of it, the bits that the government felt that they had to get rid of, those ones have gone. They've kept the golden visa. Um, and I think it's clear that they're still looking for outside investment in Portugal and they're looking for people to move to Portugal. And they're trying to manage ways of making that possible while, um, you know, while keeping the uh, people in Portugal uh, happy about how they're doing that. And so it's interesting to to see this uh, new route or this um, route that's been there for a while that I think is going to get promoted a lot more um, that and how that's going to benefit Portugal and how also it can help people obtain residency in Portugal for those that um, that want to move here to be able to move here and those that don't to be able to just have their uh, foot in the door, so to speak, of Portugal, uh, while also living another uh, life somewhere else and um, still working towards that um, Portuguese passport, which I know is a major draw for uh, so many people, particularly in the US, but also in places like South Africa. Um, it really is uh, such a wonderful thing to be able to have that passport and have access to the whole of the EU and all of the benefits that come with that. So, um, Jason, it's been a while since we spoke, um, but there's been a lot has happened. Um, I don't think uh, we had thought anything about NHR last time we spoke or that ending. There was um, a lot of talk about the golden visa ending, but we weren't quite sure exactly when it would happen. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe, uh, yeah, take us up to speed with everything that's going on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's no, good to uh, to be back. And uh, and then talking to everyone, hopefully, yeah, to answer a lot of the questions. Um, I, I think I, as you will be, James, having a lot of questions of similar nature coming in over recent weeks. Um, and yeah, it is a an ever changing topic of the golden visa. And just when we thought everything was about to settle down, we then got the announcement about NHR, which has uh, filled up the hotline again as uh, as far as new questions and, of course, a bit of worry to meet the NHR deadline uh, by the end of the year. Uh, but yeah, thanks for everyone for joining. Thanks for uh, for in inviting me on, James. I've emailed everyone this morning um, just with an introduction, really, as to who I am. But for those that are joining for the first time, um, I'm based here in, in Albufeira, down in the south of Portugal. And uh, I'll introduce a bit about what I do and, uh, and the company shortly. But the plan for today, yeah, is to try and answer everyone's questions. Uh, the topic, of course, how do I qualify for the Portugal Golden Visa? Um, yeah, which which uh, a lot of confusion about at the moment. Of course, the program is still open, which is the first message. It's all good news as far as the program is open for business, um, but the rules have recently changed. So I will start with a kind of an overall introduction to the basics of the program, those that are just joining for the first time, or maybe uh, at the beginning of their Golden Visa journey, uh, so that you can be up to speed with exactly what it is and of course work out if it's something that you should be getting involved with. Uh, I'll have a look at the new rules um, with everybody so you're clear on what exactly has changed and how you can qualify of course for the golden visa under those new rules. I uh, will have a look at of course NHR. I know it's a, a popular question at the moment. I'll bring it up to speed exactly with what can and cannot be done with NHR at this point. Uh, we'll talk about the family members, you know, which family members can be involved with the Golden Visa process uh, and really the, 
the big headline um, at the moment is you know, how you can qualify for the visa with 100,000 euros less than the 500,000 minimum investment. So uh, loads to cover. I'm going to try not to talk for too long because uh, it focuses, of course, a live Q&A. So at the end, um, we'll make sure we cover everybody's questions. Uh, you'll see a little live Q&A box uh, at the bottom of your screen as well. Uh, so feel free to say hello. Uh, hi there, Angela. I've seen your message. I did pick up your email earlier, Angela, so I will come back to you there as well. But thanks for joining. Uh, and yeah, any questions, please do drop them in as we go through and uh, we'll pick up towards the end. Um, so yeah, let's get stuck in. So I uh, just want to a stranger to anyone that's joining for, for the first time. My name is Jason Swan. Uh, I'm a senior partner for Holborn Assets. Uh, as I mentioned, based in Portugal myself. I've been here now for two years, uh, previously in Spain, in Malaga for five years. Uh, my Portuguese is still just as bad as my Spanish. Um, and But previous to Spain, I was back, of course, in Manchester, which you might be able to tell from a slight Manchester twang. Uh, my job, I work as a, a financial planner here in Portugal. I'm qualified and regulated to help my clients with uh, the financial management, both preparing and, of course, setting up the new tax residency here. Uh, however, of course, I'm going to focus on the golden visa itself. And around about six years back, uh, Holborn Assets launched the program designed to achieve residency and citizenship in many different countries around the world. Um, but our formerly a wealth management company, we, we look after now over $3 billion between our 20 offices globally. Uh, and again, so we're going to focus particularly on one part of the group, which is Holborn Passport around the Golden Visa. Uh, but any questions you have around yeah, numbers or the visa or generally living in Portugal, well, that can help. Um, I'm very biased towards Portugal. I love the south of Portugal, but you know, you're not going to go too far wrong either way. But and um, whether it is Portugal that you are set on or just simply considering a new uh, destination for the future, uh, just to give everyone a guide, it is not the only program that we offer. Um, you can see other EU programs by comparison to how the Portugal program works and, of course, international programs as well. But for, that, for, to, for tonight, uh, of course, all about Portugal. So um, I could let you take this slide, James, but I won't, I won't put you on the spot, but yeah, it's just generally around the, <laughs> the Golden Visa and, and what the programme is. James, of course, is a, is a fantastic writer all about Portugal. And uh, of course, if you see the quality of his content and his articles on Portugalist, you'll see he's probably the only person that knows, well, maybe not the only person, but certainly knows a lot more about Portugal as a whole um, and uh, certainly encourage so everyone to have a read through those, but specific to the Golden Visa, uh, it is uh, Europe's most popular um, citizenship program. Uh, it is a golden ticket, effectively, to have full-time access to live in Portugal. And the visa lasts for two years, and you can renew that visa every two years for as long as you like. And after you've held the visa for just five years, uh, you can apply for permanent residency and a Portuguese passport. And the benefit of that being that with a Portuguese passport, you effectively get 27 passports all at the same time because you can then live in any of the EU states. Uh, the reason why it continues to be the most popular program um, is really, well, for a couple of reasons. First of all, the minimum stay requirement is only two, it's for, technically 14 days in every two year period. So you don't have to live in Portugal full time. You don't have to move straight away, uh, but you can start the clock ticking towards getting the passport uh, with just two weeks stay every two years. Um, and it's very unique in that way. It's also the fastest, uh, fastest route to the European passport. Uh, if you compare to, for example, Spain right next door, it's actually 10 years, and you have to live in Spain for those 10 years. Uh, Greece, again, a minimum of seven years. Uh, there is the likes of Malta, but the, the investment for Malta is considerably higher than uh, than what you can do through Portugal. And so, yeah, loads of uh, loads of reasons as to why you may want to look at it, but those, I'd say that the majority of my clients are looking to maybe move to Portugal in the future, maybe as a plan B, maybe for a retirement destination, 
Uh, some of my clients are looking at the visa for not necessarily themselves, but for their children to have access to European education. Um, but yeah, as long as you're here for two weeks every two years, there's worse things to do with your time. Uh, and uh, again, after five years, you can get the passport. Uh, it was introduced in 2012. There's been now over 12,000 successful applications. Um, my company, Holborn, has now done over 10% of the world's golden visa applications. And we also maintain a 100% success rate as well, um, which is certainly something we're very proud of, but we do carry out a lot of due diligence as far as our clients before they get too far involved in the process, but also we're very particular as to which investments that we recommend as well to qualify for the program. Um, but yeah, that's what that's it. That's what we're talking about. But any any general questions on the visa itself? Again, drop it on the Q and A, and we'll come back to it as we finish. Um, but as a, a golden visa holder, as I mentioned earlier, both yourself as the main applicant, you can also include family, parents, children, all of whom have all the benefits of being a Portuguese citizen, other than you cannot vote and you cannot run for president. So unless you have a, uh, a real drive to become the next Antonio Costa, then um, yeah, you have all the benefits of being a Portuguese citizen. Portugal officially has one of the best healthcare systems anywhere in the world. The education, a similar story. Um, there's, of course, a very topical tax treatment at the moment of NHR, uh, which we'll come on to in a second. Uh, and overall, good quality of life, in my very balanced, biased opinion. Um, of course, coming from the UK, the weather is much, much better. Uh, coming from Spain, I find the, I find the Algarve quite relaxed it's a nice place to be it's technically supposed to be warmer than uh, the likes of Lisbon and Port. I don't know what your thoughts are on that James is the, the family Algarve is warmer than the north when you come down I yeah there is a noticeable difference in winter time it's it's just a couple of degrees uh warmer than Lisbon but it really makes um all that difference and then um from the north um it is uh much warmer again so I think if you're I think it's I think it's the winter is the selling point of the Algarve really because you don't get that anywhere else even in the north of Portugal it can be quite um quite cold and gray um and then obviously the rest of Europe um completely cold and gray so it, it is very very nice to spend uh, time there in the winter yeah and it's there's not there's not unfortunately a lot going on um, certainly in Albufeira during the winter, but the weather is nice. The weather is nice, but uh, yeah, of course, like the Lisbon and Porto, a lot more things, I suppose, stay open, a lot more cosmopolitan in the city centres. Uh, but yeah, if, uh, if you're looking for peace and quiet and maybe a bit of winter sun, Algarve might be the preference, but you're not going to go too far wrong, I don't think, in any part of Portugal. Uh, but if you do get fed up in Portugal, remember you can move after the five years with the passport. You know, you're not stuck in Portugal. You know, if you fancy moving over to Spain or Italy or the south of France, all of which is perfectly fine um, at that time. So, NHR. Um, I'll clarify what NHR is, first of all. So NHR stands for non-habitual residence, and it is um, it is a tax regime a tax status that was introduced back in 2009, designed to attract the world's leading talent to Portugal. And uh, it did help bring me to Portugal. I don't know if I would be deemed as the leading talent, or I'd like to think of myself as, but NHR does offer a number of benefits, both for those that are working and retired. Uh, first one, as far as employment or self-employment, if you work within a certain capacity, um, you can apply for a flat rate of just 20% income tax, which is significantly lower than the default tax rate across Europe, really, for that matter. Um, so that works particularly well for those still working. Uh, for those that are thinking about drawing from their pension, whether currently or in the future, um, that is capped at 10% as, as a flat rate of tax on pension, which is great. Uh, again, considerably lower than what you'd expect by default, uh, and it gets better still. We, again, those that are fortunate enough to be able to draw income by way of dividends, whether it be a personal company, uh, or whether it be you know a managed investment portfolio, 
uh, are those that are drawing from a rental income, whether it be their own home that's being rented out or a property portfolio. Again, for the first 10 years that you live in Portugal, you can draw that income completely tax-free. Um, so it works particularly well for those income sources. And um, for those, and I was reading an article actually, James, it might be a good one for you to, uh, to do one on this one, but I was reading an article earlier about um, how few people have actually prepared for life after NHR. Did you come across that one? Um, I haven't seen it, but uh, but yeah, I can imagine that there's a, a lot of people don't really know what'll what'll happen after the ten years, and so I don't think people are putting plans in place for that. It is definitely a good thing to think about. It might it might, it might be a good one to uh, to do it do a webinar on actually, but I think it's like less than twenty percent of people that are under NHR have actually got any provisions in place for when it finishes, and it's quite a sharp break. And tax, and we could be going from a zero to 28% um, tax hike at that point. However, uh, contrary to popular belief, there are investment vehicles where clients can hold assets like savings and their investments, where after the 10 years has passed with NHL, they can benefit from still a 60% reduction off the 28%, which kind of softens the blow a little bit. Um, but then, yeah, there's quite a lot of incentives. So that's not specific to NHR, but again, plan those planning for life when the program finishes or after the 10 years finishes, there's other ways of continuing dif- with the discounts as well. Um, but yeah, formally, the NHR program is closing and we expect that to happen by the 1st of January uh, next year. So there is a bit of a rush at the moment to register under NHR. Um, and if you can do so, great. You know, there is there is still just about enough time. Um, you know, we've got, what, two months, eight weeks to do that. I uh, do need to have an address in Portugal, first and foremost. Um, but, yeah, we, we can help with that. Again, as if you have a visa application submitted, you know, if we can get the, the golden visa through um, or, or similar visas, for that, for that matter, then... Uh, it is still possible. But time is ticking. The clock is a ticking. And uh, it has been confirmed that any applications that are submitted before the cutoff will be honoured. Um, but yeah, you've got to you've got to start that process before the 31st of December, ideally. But that, that's what it's all about. Not the most exciting topic, tax, when we think about moving to Portugal, but any questions on that, you know, feel free to get in contact and uh, I should do my best to answer those. As they come through, but is that is that all right, James? On NHR? Yeah, I think that's um, that's a, a very helpful. Do you do you think that it's definitely going to happen on January first? Um, it's very likely. I mean, well, if that if, if the golden visa was anything to go by, we might, as I mentioned before, might see we've got NHR for another couple of years, Joshua. But from what we understand, yeah, it's possible from the first of January there is a possibility it may happen at the beginning, sorry, at the end of March. Um, But, yeah, to take no chances, ideally want to do that before the end of the year. If it can't be done, it can't be done, and then we just hope for the best thereafter. Okay, Um, super. So, I'm I'm subliminally messaging everyone, James, as to how great Alba Fera is. This is uh, a picture of the beach where, uh, where I am down in the south. Um, but uh, as far as who qualifies or who can qualify for the golden visa, uh, first of all, uh, as long as you do not have already have a European passport, uh, you can apply. Okay, uh, you must not have a criminal record as well. Hopefully, we won't lose too many numbers as I say that. But you must have a clean criminal record, and we will carry out a, uh, a criminal record check as part of the application process. Um, Of course, you must make an investment into a qualifying investment, and we'll cover that in a second. And you must stay in Portugal, as I mentioned, for 14 days over an each two-year period to maintain the visa. But the big thumbs up with the Golden Visa over other visa options is there is no age requirement, there's no education requirements, there's no minimum income requirements. There is no, I say, minimum stay um, other than the two weeks every two years. It's very flexible, and it's literally a VIP pass to Portugal. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, a lovely sun. A lovely sun time, I'd normally say, but uh, I've not seen the sun for a little while, especially as soon as it goes dark before I, I leave the office these days. But, um, but yeah, that's that's the basics of it, very simple. 
very, very simple. As far as who else can be included, uh, now there is there's one main applicant, um, and the main applicant can include their dependent family members, which are deemed to be either a spouse, either married or unmarried is fine, as long as you live together. Uh, you can include children up to the age of 21, uh, potentially older than 21 as well, if they are in full-time education. And also parents, if you want your parents to come with you, that is, you can add them uh, as a dependent, if they're over the age of 65, you can um, you can add them without any evidence of dependency. It's automatically assumed in Portugal if they're age 65 or above. And if they are younger than 65, if you are younger than 21, then sometimes we can change who the main applicant is to make sure all the family members get on the application. Uh, I did an application not too long back, James, with uh, 13 Family members, all in, all in one go. We had step parents from both sides, we had children, we had everyone on there. Uh, but only one investment is needed. And yeah, as long as everyone meets one of those definitions, then uh, you get a much more, you get a lot more benefit of, of the program. Um, and uh, of course, it gives everyone the visa, everyone the passport, everyone access to the healthcare, everyone access to visa free travel. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's great. It works well. It's designed, you know, to bring. Three generations of the family uh, at the same time, if we can. So the new rules, um, what are the qualifying investments? So I made nice and clear at the top, our real estate investment of any kind no longer qualifies for the program. It isn't to say you cannot buy a property. You're still free to buy whatever you like, whether to live or to, um, to rent out or to rent yourself. Uh, but to qualify for the program, uh, the investment into property would not suffice by itself and uh, now what we then must choose from is one of the four following options the first and what will be by far the most popular and has been now for, for many years actually uh, outside of property is investment into a venture capital or a private equity fund which meets the criteria for the visa uh, there's generally two criteria one is it must be a regulated fund and it must be investing in at least 60 percent of its assets into Portuguese securities as well. Um, you can make a donation to the arts if you're if you if you're into that kind of thing. I've not found no one's asked me to make any donations just yet, strangely, but uh, but it is possible if you if you'd like to do that, it can be done. Um, you can invest into Portuguese technological uh, research, um, and you can set up a company or you can purchase a company, uh, all from five hundred thousand. Uh, the venture capital and private equity fund naturally is the, the you know the hands off, easier approach to the visa, um, but there are the other options if you wish. If you are setting up a business in Portugal anyway, um, then that might be a great way to uh, to get yourself the visa. But unless you do have a, a real want to to set up a business and manage the business and employ the staff, um, uh, or have a particular interest in the technological research of Portugal, then the venture capital fund tends to be the default go-to. Uh, property has equated for about 90% of all golden visa applications over the past past couple of years now. Um, but the fund um, the fund option has been increasing, funnily enough, over the past two years, I would say. Uh, but now it will, of course, be the go-to option without property. Um, so, yeah, there's the, there are the routes that you can travel down. Um, I'll come back to those more in a moment as far as you know, potential funds to look at. Uh, this slide, just to give everyone a, a brief overview of the process involved, it's a bit of a busy slide, um, but I suppose it's quite a busy process. But in short, um, my team looks after the whole uh, journey, if you like, from now up until when you receive the passport in six years' time. Um, it all starts with, of course, helping you find an investment that meets your requirements. And uh, once we've done that, we'll then apply for your Portuguese tax numbers, which is referred to as your NIF. You'll find you can't do a great deal without a NIF in Portugal. So that's generally step number one. And once we have that, we're then able to set up a bank account here in Portugal, which is also needed before any capital transfer into any qualifying investments. And once that has been done, you'll meet with the acting lawyers. Uh, the lawyers will then complete 
the submission of the application to uh, to Ceph. It's not actually Ceph anymore. It's renamed now. There's a little question, James. What's it? What's Ceph renamed to? I forgot. Is it I? That is a good uh, question. Yeah, I have. Um, I think I've it's on I know possibly something along those lines. Um, I forgot, but um, is it's the you know effectively it's of course the board, Portuguese Borders Agency, um, and the other new, I don't know if you're aware, James, but the new the new there is quite clear. Uh, improvements from the new uh, replacement as well. We've seen applications start to be progressed up a little bit faster. The online system is much more efficient as well. Uh, that's replaced the uh, the Ceph portal. But yeah, in short, we'll submit the application. We get the tracking number for the visa, uh, and then you're officially in your way at that point. Um, everything up until that point is done remotely. Um, we obviously you'll discuss uh, matters through Zoom with myself. Uh, you'll meet. Of course, the different people involved in the process, you meet with the lawyers um, that, uh, that will be involved as well. Um, and any document collection, of course, we send a courier to your home address. So we, we try and make it as easy as we can. The only time at which we do physically need to see you in Portugal is um, around about six months after we submit the application for the biometrics appointment. And uh, yeah, it's never something to look forward to, the meeting with, uh, with Seth. Um, but uh, it's yeah, it's something that needs to be done. You'll have someone to accompany it on the day. Uh, there'll be a bit of waiting around, but you'll have your fingerprints taken and uh, and your photo ready for the visa card, as you'll see at the bottom. Um, that's it. That's all that's involved. Visa cake. Um, so yeah, any questions that again, drop in a QA. and a We're going to come up to the Q&A very shortly. Um, but I think we covered most on that. So the process in total from when we do the application to the submission, at the, mo at the moment we're expecting about 12 months. It is currently, a, we'd probably say a little bit longer than that at the moment, but we're pretty confident uh, that we're going to see the overall processing time come down to about 12 months. Uh, and when the visa is issued, and from when you have the visa, uh, it's then lasts for two years. Uh, as mentioned before, you can renew the visa then as many times as you like. Uh, but once you've held the visa for five years, we will then apply for your permanent residency on the basis that you have maintained your clean criminal record and you have also learnt a basic uh, level of Portuguese as well, which I've not got round to myself just yet. I've got three years left. Um, <laughs> I am dreading it, unfortunately. I do, do speak Portuguese, James. Um, I I do my best. Uh, I, I will say that the um the level that they ask for for citizenship is quite achievable. So it's the A two. It's still in the beginner category. It's upper beginner, and you only need to get a fifty five percent pass rate, as far as I remember. So um, I think it's very very doable. The uh, the other thing I'd say about it is they um they only seem to have the exams every couple of uh, months, and if you you're living in another part of the world and doing it it might be even less you might have to go to a testing center somewhere so it is something that you can actually get out of the way at any point during those five years this certificate is still be valid as far as I understand so if you can get it done um before the five-year mark especially that means that once you hit that um uh, in terms of uh, meeting your residency requirements, you can apply for citizenship straight away and you won't have the holdup of then, you know, waiting for a test to come up and being able to pass that and potentially have to reset it again if you uh, if you didn't study for during those five years. Yeah, yeah, so it's, uh, I mean, we, we have some clients that are kind of doing it bit by bit over that, that five-year period or, you know, you can do a crash course and, and just get it out of the way, early doors. And unlike James said, if, as long as you have a certificate and we can provide that uh, when we do the application for the passport, great. Job done. Uh, and then, yes, you have the officially the fifth best passport in the world. Um, and you can then reside full time in any European country of your choice. Um, should you wish to move away from Portugal for any reason, or maybe maybe you didn't even end up in Portugal. You know, there might be people on this webinar that actually want to live in France in five years from now. Um, but, you know, to get the European passport, best to do that through Portugal because of, of how the programme works. But 
you know, you can decide at that point, but you'll have all options open to you. Uh, something that I think yourself and, and I take for granted as well, James, as for those that have a first world passport already, is obviously visa free travel as well. I have some clients that are coming from other uh, third world countries that don't have the freedom just to fly into countries for holidays as well. Uh, and you do get Schengen, uh, Schengen visa uh, travel with the golden visa. Uh, so you can travel to other countries during the visa period, uh, as well as, you know, 187 countries all over the world. So for some for some nationalities, that's a big plus, which, again, we, we take for granted with mm-hmm. our passports that we, we already get. But, but yeah, that's, that's, the, that's what's on offer. That's the, uh, that's the goal. So as a quick recap, um, the process to submit the application will take around about two to four weeks. Uh, to submit the application to CEF, uh, or the equivalent of. Um, they'll take around about 12 months to receive the visa, at which point we'll renew the visa after year two, we'll renew the visa again after year four, uh, and then after we've held the visa for five years is when we can apply for the permanent passport, sorry, permanent residency and uh, the uh, passport. Uh, okay, so yeah, hopefully that was... Uh, that was okay. And some, some good questions coming in. I would say we'll jump on these, but I'm gonna suggest I'm just got a few more slides to run through and then we'll we'll do the uh we'll do I might be able to answer some of the questions as uh, as we go through the final slides and then we'll, we shall jump straight in. Okay, so the next part then so sorry, that's that's the process, that's what's involved. Hopefully that's nice and clear. Um the first part of the process, of course, is working out where you want to invest and how you want to invest. Uh, and there are some key considerations. Now, of course, when investing into property, property is something that I think from a young age we're all very familiar with and feel quite comfortable with. It's something that you can kind of touch and feel and understand, although buying in another country can be a little bit daunting. In the main, property has always been a very popular option. Uh, now with property out of the way, you know, you've got to be choosing from investments that have maybe other considerations, which, um, might, you know, for, for a lot of people is not something that you've looked at before. So first of all, you know, some, some kind of things to look out for. Um, and, um, you know, as you go down the investment fund route, okay, well, if you start with the things like setting up a business, you know, that that's for those that are, have an entrepreneurial flair that, you know, I would expect to have a good understanding of setting up a business in Portugal in order to venture into. Uh, the donation is very simple. Investing into technological research is, you know, to some extent, very similar to the investment funds. Um, but in the main, yeah, for, for, for the investment that you choose, first and first most commonly requested thing for me is, is security of capital. You know, how safe is my money? Um, so you've got to be you've got to be fully understanding exactly how secure the investment is, what provisions there are to secure the capital. Again, buying a property, you know you have bricks and mortar um, to to secure that investment. So go to understand the security for your capital. Uh, it's important to be aware of time periods as well. So a lot of investment funds have minimum time periods, sometimes in excess of ten years, um, and. Uh, Again, be mindful of you know what happens if I need to make a withdrawal, what happens if I change my mind and, and things like this. Um, fees. Uh, I've seen some astronomically high fees on, on certain funds in Portugal uh, that consist of initial setup fees. There can be management fees that are paid on an annual basis. Uh, performance fees. You know, if, if the fund manager does well, I've seen there are funds out there that will take up to a 50% reduction as a performance fee. Um, and exit fees as well, and it can be very expensive. You know, be very wary of of fees. Um, ensure that you have a full, transparent breakdown of any funds that you consider in, uh, to understand what you're getting yourself in for. Uh, be aware of the risk rating. Again, funds come in all shapes and sizes. You have low risk funds, medium risk funds, high risk funds. Generally, the returns are driven by the appetite for risk that you take. Um, but if you're not familiar with the industry of the fund, it sometimes can be difficult to assess the real risk of something going wrong. Um, the, of course, the expected returns 
uh, of the of pet and pest performance of the funds you, you want to, to consider. Um, you know, what type of returns? Are the returns guaranteed? Are they fixed? Are they, are they have variable funds, sorry, variable returns? You know, and uh, and the, the, yeah, these are all the type of things to consider. Obviously, the, the you know the fund manager. You know, what is the fund? What's the fund worth? Is it just popped up yesterday, or has it been in place for for some time? Um, and of course, making sure it's a regulated fund, um, and where possible, that there is some kind of asset backed guarantee with a fund. Um, you know, so it's not dependent on you know something being successful uh, and putting the capital at significant risk. Uh, so yeah, so that, those are just some there are there are many more when considering obviously for my wealth management clients, we spend this, this is what I do. For, it's quite funny, James, that we've come kind of round circle. I've gone financial advisor, become golden visa specialist, and now we're talking about property and now coming full circle back with of course investment funds, which is something that you know as a company we've been doing for over 20 years. And uh, yeah, we'll guide you through these things. If there are funds that you've seen or investments generally that you want me to look at, I'm happy to do that. Same as with, uh, you know, with with your your readers, um, just send them over. Send me an email. I'm happy to, uh, you know, highlight anything that you might need to be aware of. Uh, so yeah, I hope that that's helpful. As far as what um, what we look for, as far as our criteria uh, and our service, we will. Of course, we do facilitate the whole golden visa process, but first and foremost, we'll help you find an investment and we will make a recommendation for an investment in line with your personal requirements. Um, and what the, the kind of key points that we're looking for before making a recommendation is as follows. So we always look to get asset, you know, a fund that is asset backed, you know, ideally against some type of property, uh, some type of uh, tangible uh, asset so that you have an improved level of security so you're not you know it's not just a piece of paper uh, as we assume with some funds and um, we'd look for a minimum time period you know trying to ensure maximum flexibility you know we need to be invested for the six years to get the passport but ideally you know we don't want to be invested you don't want to be tied to an investment for any longer than you need to be uh, at all costs, we try to avoid fees. So again, um, where possible, we scrap all types of fees on the funds, unless a fund is particularly exceptional by way of returns and justifies fees, which you know there isn't a lot that come to mind. We will just look at something that where you keep one hundred percent of your capital. Uh, we look predominantly for low risk. And of course, regulated funds. Okay, we're not getting involved with uh, some wild and wacky venture capital funds that I've come across. I've had clients ask me about some incredible, incredibly exciting projects from the sounds of it, but I'm not too sure how, how secure some of the funds out there are. But you know, we're, we're looking for very straightforward, pre-qualified, regulated funds uh, that have a good track record with a big fund manager that uh, you know we can be we can be confident with. Um, fixed and guaranteed returns. Uh, again, it's a big plus. Something that seems very, has always been very popular to have a predetermined uh, return. If we can get a guaranteed return, fantastic. Again, you don't want to be necessarily investing it into a healthcare fund that has variable returns if you have no understanding of the healthcare industry or the te technology industry and things like this. So we try to make it as simple as we can, but looking for fund, a fund which has a fixed or guaranteed return even better uh, with a guarantee of capital. And uh, I'll, I'll give you an example of, of, of one of our funds in a, in a moment, but we want, we want to take away from our clients the need to worry about getting the money back in six years or the value of the investment in six years. So you'll find more often than not, with our recommendations, you will have a guaranteed exit of, for example, 500,000 euros at that time. Um, and yeah, of course, if we can add any additional incentives, again, some of the funds over time that you'll see will have extra incentives. Sometimes there can be you know, complimentary stays at nice hotels in, in Portugal, which everybody likes. Um, but uh, yeah, this, this is what we're looking for. This is what you also should look for, in, of course, my opinion. When assessing funds. Um, okay, Jim, so makes sense.
on my bill. That, that makes a lot of sense. From the people that I've spoke to who've um, spoken to me about funds, uh, it seems to be that they are basically just looking to put their money in and get it out in six years time they're not necessarily looking at this as some investment that's going you know that's going to make them uh, rich the reward at the end is the passport and they want to find something that'll uh, that'll basically mean that they get all, um, their money back at the end of the period so they're looking for something that's the most uh, secure and most low risk um, rather than necessarily the highest returns obviously there's um, you know different people have different um uh, goals and and things that they want but generally speaking that's what I've noticed from people who've asked about it yeah yeah good and that's my experience as well it's very rare someone asks for a high risk fund in another country especially so um, of course for our wealth management clients we have clients of all different aspirations uh, my youngest client is 22 my, my eldest client maybe the late 80s now naturally you know you're much more adventurous as as you're younger and, and generally veer away from risk as, uh, as as coming into retirement, but yeah, we keep it as simple as we can, and uh, and and yeah, that's that's what we're looking for. So as a, as a as a quick example, uh, I mean for for any any questions, obviously on our recommendations, I, I'll encourage, of course, all the other are watching to to make some time to catch up if you feel that the Golden Visa program is something that you'd like to find out more about uh, or get involved with. Um, yeah, send me an email and, and book in or a one-to-one -one chat, at which point we can talk through the investment options in more detail. Uh, but just as an example, uh, one fund that we have uh, at the moment, we have, we have access, exclusive access to a fund um, which ticks most ticks most, most of those boxes. Uh, it has uh, pays an upfront return. It actually pays 101,000 euros uh, upfront uh, to the point where it can actually be, can actually use that money towards the initial capital of 500,000 to qualify um, and in short reduces the initial capital to 400,000 needed rather than 500,000. Um, it has a guaranteed buyback in year six. So ultimately it's 400,000 that goes in at the outset with a guaranteed 500,000 to be returned um, once the passport is granted. It's not conditional on the passport, but it's designed you know, from year six to give you the option uh, to do that uh, it's a low risk fund um it is asset backed again it is it has property held as collateral against the in the investment fund uh, it's regulated by the portuguese commission as well and yeah there's no no fees as i mentioned there's no fees no entry exit no management fees no performance fees 100 percent of the capital remains invested uh, and as far as an additional incentive, the investors of the fund get access to a complimentary stay at um, a very nice resort. James, one I did talk about only a couple of years back now with uh, with Portugalista, which is the the Royal Obidos Golf and Spa Resort uh, up on the uh, on the Silver Coast. And um, so, yeah, again, as an example of, of the fund, so this is what we're looking for. This is the benchmark, um, and. Uh, and yeah, that's hopefully I've covered most most bits there. But uh, I'm going to take a brief breather from talking for a second. Uh, of course, I've got a, a nice QR code there, James. Hope you like that one. But if anyone would like to schedule a meeting, you can just scan the screen for my calendar, uh, or of course, just drop me a message with any questions. But shall we get stuck into some questions now, James? Yeah, I think that's a very good idea. Um, I have I have plenty of them from people, and um, I think yeah, if people have very very specific questions, it's a good idea to to use that QR code or use your email address there and book in a meeting uh, with you. Let's uh, let's see what we've got. So um, one thing I noticed actually on the um, the last slide was the the stay was um, six weeks, um, but I think in the other um, hotel things before it'd been I think it was only one to two weeks. So it's quite a lot more that they're offering with this package. Is that right? Yeah, then funnily enough, the Royal Obidos did offer. It was the only hotel to offer six weeks. Um, okay. The general the general default is one to two weeks. Yeah. Um, so let's see if we can start with um, uh, start with some easy ones then. So um, 
Kent says, uh, how long is the investment requirement for the Golden Visa? How long do you need to maintain your investment? Um, we need to stay invested for formally five years, but it takes okay. about one year to get the visa. So in total, around six years for the investment. And that's why you know, most, op most options are designed around you know, a six-year release of the investment capital. Okay. And um, Angela asks, does the golden visa lead to Portuguese citizenship? It does indeed, yes. Uh, after five years of holding the visa, we we can actually submit the application for the citizenship after four and a half years, ready to pick that up from the fifth year. Okay. Um, and uh, there was another question there, I believe from Angela as well, who was asking about the process for renewing the visa um, does this happen online or is this something that you would do in person? Uh, it is all done online now. Um, it used to be in person as of this year, but yeah, all, all online. Uh, and yes, ultimately it'll be the acting lawyers that will help with that process at year two and year four. Okay. And um, Valerie has kindly uh, pointed out that the new name for Seth is um, AIMA or A-I-M-A. -A, so We'll have to get used to and stop saying the word Seth. It'll be hard as I feel it comes up in um, in a lot of conversations, but Ama is the new one. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit embarrassing, isn't it? But thank you for that. <laughs> um, so Margot is asking the average rate of return. Um, I guess uh, I'm not sure if that means this particular investment that you're talking about or just in general, but I'll let you sort of give an answer to both. Uh, average rate of return is ultimately driven by the investment appetite, investment for risk. Um, you know, low, low risk investments will yield anywhere between, say, two to four percent as, as a rough guide. Um, medium risk funds, you know, between four to six percent as a guide. Adventurous funds, you know, upwards can be in, in excess of ten percent per year, but of course, are uh, much more volatile. Uh, and you know, the, the more you know, you generally lose some of the assurances of things like guaranteed returns, guaranteed capital, if you go into the higher risk funds to drive for a bigger return. So. Naturally, it's just a personal preference. Um, and yeah, you know, we'll we, we look at the options out there together and uh, we, we, we try and find the best one. Okay. And just, um, I noticed you'd mentioned both venture capital and private equity funds. What What is the difference between the two of those? A uh, venture capital fund is kind of like a project fund. So it's almost like it's raising capital. You are, you are raising capital, for example, there might be a new wind farm that's being built in Porto, for example, and there is X amount of money required and there'll be a venture capital fund set up for that venture to raise capital for that project. Uh, private equity is when you are, you know, you have a stake in an existing company and you'll buy units and you'll, you know, you'll have a share holding in, you know, an existing business or you buy equity, you know, you, you buy equity in a company. Okay. Um, Carolyn asks if the passport is guaranteed um, the with the gold visa and also with um, citizenship. So I guess there's a two-part question there. Um, the retain the the success rate from visa to passport is ninety-seven percent. Okay. The three percent that don't make it to passport generally fall into that criteria where they've got in trouble with the law, perhaps in some way or quite simply have not learned Portuguese. But yeah, it's, it's this, the criteria, unlike, for example, when, for example, with our US, US program, you know, the, the, if you get, if you apply for the passport and you just have someone that's a bit grumpy on the day, it's kind of 50-50 if, you, you, if you'll be approved. <laughs> but with Portugal, the rules are very, very clear, as long as you keep the clean criminal record. And uh, of course you've met the rules for the investment and you've learned the Portuguese with your certificate, and yeah, it's very straightforward. It's it's a it's a it's an automatic accept. Okay. Um, and then some questions. Um, are so there is a percentage of these investments that are in uh, Portugal. Is that correct? And are the other is the other percentage invested elsewhere? 
It is, yeah. Well, like the ruler has to be at least 60%, has to invest at least 60% into Portuguese securities. Um, that's the, the only restriction. Ultimately, it has to be very biased towards Portugal. So they're not they're not necessarily the funds that you would invest into on you know an open market platform without without the golden visa restrictions. Um, but yeah, as long as it's 60 percent into Portugal, you know, the other 40 percent can be elsewhere. OK. Um, and then there is a question then about um, uh, fees relating to the golden visa. So I guess on top of the um, 399,000 euros, what other costs should people expect to pay? And uh, costs are generally broken down into two parts. Uh, you have legal fees and you'll have uh, the government fees. Uh, Holborn, we, we don't charge fees. Um, ultimately, we are paid, of course, but our fees are paid for uh, by the developer or the, the fund manager for facilitating the visa. Uh, but you will still have golden visa fees for the government and legal fees. Generally speaking, um, it's around about six, six to eight thousand in government fees per person uh, initially, and again as a, as a round as a rough figure, around about four thousand for the renewal of year two and year four. Uh, and legal fees again depends on the investment and the law firm uh, and the number of family members, but can be anywhere between five and 15,000 euros um, as, as a guide. And that's it. That's, there's no the, the other plus point with funds, James, is that you don't pay you know, the big property tax. So you know, there's like 35, 40,000 euros in property tax with uh, IMT. You don't have to pay that with a fund. So it's a huge, huge, huge saving. So it's literally just legal fees and uh, the government fees. Okay. Um, there's a question here which might be spe uh, a bit specific, but you can uh, let me know. This person, they have their assets tied up in investments in the U.S. at the moment, um, and they want to uh, sell those to reinvest in the golden visa. What would be the best way of doing that without paying a lot of uh, tax potentially in the U.S.? I won't even has it. Yeah. I won't, even, I won't even attempt to answer that question, not necessarily because I can, but because I will, I cannot be seen to be given any kind of financial advice, unfortunately, without assessing situations. But uh, I'm not a US specialist myself, but we do have, of course, the facility to give that kind of advice. Uh, so I would suggest a one-to-one -one meeting to answer those questions. And I can, of course, bring in a colleague to give some specific American advice on that. But uh, yeah. If that's that's all we can say on that on that topic for now. Okay, of course it can be done. Most most of our clients are from America. Probably eighty percent mm -hmm. of our clients are from America, um, and things like IRAs and four hundred one ks often are the source of capital for the visa. But as far as things like penalties and taxes on those assets would require a little bit more assessment. Okay, so if anyone has specific questions about that, best to get in touch with uh, you and then you can connect them with the US expert in your um, company. Um, I'll do a couple of questions about NHR now just because um, I know there's a few there and we haven't answered that for a few moments. So um, first question, do you think there will be a replacement to NHR um, if and when it does end? Uh, yes, I think there will be. I think there'll be there will be some type of tax incentives. There will always be some tax incentives. Um, what I assume will happen is there will be incentives for professionals that are working. Um, Portugal's quite hot on that. They do want to attract young professionals, so for those that are self-employed and employed. You know, you might continue to see a, a low rate of income tax. Uh, I don't know if they will continue to offer kind of the, the tax exemption on rental income and dividends. It's possible. Um, we don't know if the cap on 10% pension income will continue. But I wouldn't be surprised. I, I don't think it will be abolished entirely. There will still be something to replace NHR. Uh, but only time will tell exactly what it will consist of. 
Yeah, there have been some announcements that they are looking at attracting people in specific industries like tech and research and things like that. Um, but it's um, and then others that suggest there might be some th a benefit for everybody. So um, it's not exactly clear right now uh, what the route will look like. So I guess it's um, uh, better the devil, you know, and uh, apply for NHR while it's still there rather than hoping for something in the future. Yeah, where, where possible. Yeah, if you can, if you can do it whilst you know what you're dealing with, great. And uh, if not, yeah, we just uh, we just wait and see. Um, and on the subject of someone working and NHR, um, Angela is asking if someone earns a th um a hundred thousand per year working for a company in the US, um, what would their sort of tax situation look like under NHR? Um. Well, it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, offer any benefit if the company if employed by a US company. It's only specific to um else, yeah for the for the for the income tax it needs to be working in Portugal. It's applicable for Portuguese income. Um not necessarily though not necessarily uh, there's a there's a few possible answers to that question, but in the short, I don't think it will offer any particular benefits uh, if employed by a US company. Uh, if that income can be changed to by way of a dividend payment, <clears throat> that may help. But the other thing to remember as a US national is that the uh, there is the, the US is only one is one of two countries in the world that continues to tax its nationals even when they move away. So. It's not. It's often not a question about what Portugal will do. It's a question of you know you're still going to be taxed by the US anyway, and so NHR isn't isn't quite as valuable for American citizens as sometimes first thought. But uh, again, for any personal advice on that, I'd suggest to uh, yeah, just book a, a meeting in and we'll, we'll we'll go through that together, and uh, I'll bring in a, a, our US compatriot if needed. And just 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 to clarify that, Jim, I do I, I provide advice to Americans that are living in Europe, but as currently resident in the U.S., it's something that uh, is not my speciality. So, as uh, as everyone gets to Portugal, we can talk through, uh, you know, what things to be uh, to be to be considering. But you know, as far as kind of taxation on current assets or anything specific to U.S. assets, whilst a U.S. tax resident would be something we'd uh, we'd tackle separately. Okay, um, good to know. I guess it's um, two completely different areas. Um, let's see. Um, so uh, I had a question about the um, qualifying for the 400,000 amount. Mm -hmm. Is um, is that a case of simply paying 400,000 or uh, does the person need to pay 500,000 and then they immediately get um, 101 back? Uh, no, it can be pay. It can be done where you pay four hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah, uh, the the return is paid upfront. Um, the return is paid to the investor upfront, and then the full five hundred thousand. Sorry, full yeah, full five hundred thousand then is transferred into uh, into the fund. So yeah, four hundred thousand only from the investor is fine. Okay. Um, and is there a period when this um, fund opens and closes in terms of when people can sign up for it? Um, not as not a date as such, but there's only th in this, this particular fund, assuming referring to the same one there, James, there's 32 spots in that particular fund. Um, Holborn, it is exclusive to Holborn, but we are a global company. I think I have there's about 150 um advisory globally with it within Holborn so I don't know how long that will remain open but uh, there's 32 spaces that were introduced last week um, and yeah if that is the fund that you wish to explore I would of course encourage um, a meeting as soon as possible and I can get all the information out where, where necessary. Okay that's um, that's good to know and will there be future um, funds in um, other funds in the future? Oh, of course, yes, we will be adding to the portfolio. There's always new funds coming available. Um, 
Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, we, we've been the, the market leader now for, for Golden Visa Investments for some time. And uh, yeah, we, we will always have qualifying investments. Um, so yeah, we, we, we will just make a, a recommendation at the time of, you know, when, when we speak to our clients. Okay. And those that do the golden visa, so the, um, they only need to spend 14 days every two years. Um, does that mean that they wouldn't necessarily be tax resident in Portugal or how does that work? Yeah, I should clarify that because it's a common question. So the golden, the golden visa does not change your tax residency. Um, and that's a common misconception, but having the visa and even having the passport does not change your tax. Uh, it's completely separate. It is it is almost just permission. It's permission to move to Portugal. It is not going to change your tax residency. Your tax only changes when you physically move your person to Portugal and you stay in Portugal for over six months of the year. Uh, but until that time, you can get the visa and you can get the passport without changing your tax residency. Okay, good to um, good to know for those people who want to um, dis if decide whether to be taxed in Portugal or not. Um, so there's a couple of questions then about sort of the speed of obtaining the golden visa. The first thing I was going to ask was, um, have you noticed any changes um, over the past, uh, I guess, a couple of weeks with the changes from CEF to AMA in terms of speed of getting things processed? Um, yes, yeah, we have yeah, an, an, almost an immediate change. Yeah, it's been quite quite notable, um, and hence our confidence that the processing time uh, in total will reduce. Uh, but yeah, it's it's looked much better, much much better so far. Okay. For those that want to apply for NHR before the um, the deadline in uh, January, what do they need to do? Do they need to physically be um, resident in Portugal? Um, well, you do need to have an address in Portugal, first and foremost, uh, okay. and at least to be in a position where you've submitted a visa application. Um, Formally, yeah, you, you need to be resident in Portugal or at least show clear intentions of your imminent move to Portugal. It is a bit of a grey area at the moment. Technically, all you need to have done is submit the application for the NHR. Um, you know, as to when you move, I say ultimately, you know, once the programme is granted, it lasts for 10 years, but... It is ideally on the basis that you are have moved, you have an address, or are imminently moving. Uh, if it's something kind of three, four years from now, um, then you know you're probably scratching a little bit outside of that grey area, I would say. But it's looked at on a case by case basis. Again, you know, once we uh, we speak, we go into to, to particular details. We can bring the uh, the lawyers into the call to get their opinion on on the time frame and uh, what can be done. Okay. So um, we're about two, just under two months um, outside of the deadline for the, or the proposed deadline for the NHR. If someone was to contact you today about the fund, are they able to get that fund processed and an NHR application in, in time? Yes. Yeah, just about, just about. <laughs> Just about, yep. Okay. Um, that is um, that is good to know. Uh, one question then from Anne. She asked, did I understand correctly, invest 399,000 euros and guaranteed to get 500,000 euros back in six years? Uh, yes, that is correct, Anne. Um, so 399 initially, 101,000 euros is paid up front which is effectively the return over the next six years of the investment. So you can use that as part of the initial investment capital. And yes, you have a guaranteed buyback at the end of six years uh, at 500,000. Um, it's an optional buyback. So if you want to stay in the fund, that's fine. You can, you can actually stay in the fund, no problem. Um, but yeah, worst case scenario, it has a the buyback of 500,000 from year six. And what happens if the fund goes down during that time? 
the value of the fund? Um, well, it's it's a fix. It's all fixed. It's all predetermined from the outset. So there's no um, there's no variable in the returns of the fund. Um, of course, I'll go through the te technicalities of that particular fund on on a one to one basis. But yeah, there's no there's no performance to report. It's all predetermined. The returns are paid up front. So yeah, and you just have it. You have a guaranteed buyback at the end of that period. So there's no worries about you know the value going down over that time, for example, which is the problem with a lot of funds. You know, if uh, if the value goes down, but yeah, that particular one is all predetermined from the outset. Okay, so that is um that is good to know. You know what you're getting with that one. Um, you're not you're taking less of a, a gamble than with a standard investment. Yeah, indeed. Um, I've got a couple more for you, uh, Jason. I don't know how much uh, time you have left. You okay? Are you okay? Fire away. Yeah, we're doing well. Um, so these ones are um. There's one from uh, Sharon, and it's a uh, slightly off topic. It's more about the um, setting up a business for the golden visa. She wants to start a gluten-free and dairy-free uh, takeaway business. Um, would this be a suitable business for the golden visa? Uh, yes, as long as the you can either set up a business and employ ten staff for the duration. That's potential, or you can buy an existing gluten-free business from five hundred thousand euros. That's the other option. Oh, okay. And is there an investment if you're employing ten staff? Is there a minimum investment amount? Do you know that you need to put in? Um, no, I don't think there is. Um, okay. don't, please don't hold me to that one, but uh, yeah. I need to double check. But uh, I don't think so. No, but, you, but of course, the cost of employing ten staff over the minimum period of time is likely to be in excess of that investment so it all, it's all kind of relative um but yeah i'll just need to, to check that to be sure okay um there's a question then about um loans um to starting a business or investing i guess this might be similar to the mortgage question that came up when property was an option can you take out a loan for any of these golden visa investments um you can yes you can i mean as ultimately the as long as the funds come from your portuguese bank account into the fund that is the requirement as to how those funds were generated before transferring them to your portuguese bank account is not of that much relevance Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, so the answer is yes, but it would be, of course, you'd have to take that, you'd have to secure that finance um, on whatever it may be. But yeah, it can do. It's just that there's nothing in Portugal to secure it against, like a property, for example. So it's okay. okay. Um, uh, Renata is intending to open a small B and B. Um, would that income fall under the NHR regime? Do you know? I guess it might depend on the, the categories they have. Do you know more about that, Jason? Um, in short, unfortunately not. Um, it would be, it's, I mean, NHR is designed for around overseas income. So if it was a BNB in Portugal, unfortunately, it would be a no. And even under the category of income tax, um, I don't think it would come under any of the specific job types to qualify. So no, I don't think the NHL would offer any benefits to um to a BNB. Okay. Uh James is asking about the definition of um residency and whether that means permanent residency. I guess there are two types of residency in Portugal, uh Jason, that you could touch on. Yeah, um residency, there is your residency, as in you have permission to live in Portugal, uh, and you can have you can be you have the golden visa residency, for example, and then you have your tax residency, which is when you are physically living in Portugal. Um, but the definition of residency, in most terms, is you are living in the country for over six months of the year to be a resident of that country, but uh, you can still have a residence permit without being a full-time resident, if that makes sense. 
But, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, the renewal periods for the golden visa, what years are those in? Um, after year two and year four, it was about one year to get the visa, which will then last for two years. So and then, so yeah, it's every every two years. So around three years from now, I would be the first renewal, which would be one year to get the visa, and then the two years for which the visa lasts for. Okay. Um, let's see if we've uh, got any more questions uh, for you, uh, Jason. Um. Let's see. So we have covered the deadline to submit the NHR application. Um, let's see what else we've got. So this person, their uh, husband is an EU citizen. Would they also be able to apply for the um, N uh, golden visa? Uh, if they're an EU citizen, then there's no benefits of the golden visa. Okay. So as an EU citizen, you already have rights to live in Portugal. Uh, and that's something that, you know, being a, a Brit, we also used to uh, enjoy before Brexit. But um, yeah, uh, but of course, becoming a, a, a an EU citizen, yeah, that's that's the benefits of Europe. You can live wherever you like, yeah, so no, no golden visa is needed for that person. Okay. Um. They can apply for NHR. NHR you can still apply for when you move to Portugal, but the visa is not needed. And uh, the type of um, funds that you offer if someone was already able to move to Portugal, but they also wanted to invest in some kind of fund, is that something they'd be able to do separately outside of the golden visa? Yeah, of course. Well, that, that is predominantly what, what we do um, globally. We are a wealth management practice. We're, we're one of the largest wealth management practices in Europe. Um, and yeah, we, we provide I'm a qualified and regulated financial planner. And uh, yeah, very happy to talk through investment options, not necessarily linked to the golden visa, no problem. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Um, Marco has asked, what is the GRP process? Do you know what that means, Jason? I'm not sure myself. I don't, unfortunately. I can't put the name to GRP. Maybe if, if Margo wants to just clarify that for us, I'll, I'll answer it in a moment. Okay, perfect. I um, will leave that uh, there. Um, and then there's another question about um, registering for the NHR. Uh, if they've um, bought a, a, a new construction, uh, so... Um, it doesn't have a physical address at there at the moment. I guess that's coming in the future. Is there any kind of service where they can pay to get an address in Portugal? Uh, well, it's, yeah, it's very easy to get an address in Portugal. Um, the answer is, in the short is yes. Uh, it wouldn't be linked to, of course, the property that is not built just yet. But yeah, you know, it's it's, uh, it's relatively straightforward to to get an address in Portugal. Yeah. Okay. And then um, Anna's asking if the guaranteed buyback of 500k includes the 100k that's been paid up front. Um, yes, I think if I understood correctly, yes, it does. So 400,000 uh, is paid by the investor. The 100,000 is paid up front. Um, and then the buyback is 500,000 in year six. So that's in total. So that would be returning the 400,000 that the investor has invested plus of course the hundred thousand euros as well at that time okay um i think that's all the questions at the moment oh wait no there's um a couple more coming in um just while i read these uh, jason what uh, what type of uh, client do you see benefiting from the golden visa what sort of um, people does it attract um it attracts those that would like to live in Europe, of course, whether now or in the future. Um, but because there isn't a minimum stay, a huge minimum stay requirement, you can just go on holiday in Portugal for the next five years and uh, be left with a passport, which gives you then gives you and your family full access to the education system, the healthcare system, all of course, the very nice weather and the beaches and everything else that's great about Portugal. Um, and, um, and yeah, it also serves as a kind of a plan B. A, a lot of my clients, 
in the US in particular at the moment have, have been kind of talking about you know political issues and concerns that they have for the future and like the idea of being able just to jump over into Europe at any time. So, you know, that's, they can do that. You know, you can do that without having to move here right now. We can just get the passport. Um, and, uh, and, you know, that for children, like I say, I have some clients that are, uh, you know, don't want their children to study in the country where they live. I've had a couple of clients recently say that they've struggled with gun crime as well. One of my client's neighbor's daughter was shot, I believe, in some kind of uh, gang shootings, which, uh, which again, I'm not on for lots of politics, but uh, I think that, that seems to have been a relatively common topic recently. So, yeah, it's just that second plan B option to move to Portugal, whether it's now or later, for you and your family in the main. Hopefully that helps. Uh, that does help. That is um, that is a lot of what I'm seeing people uh, coming through with the golden visa questions are asking as well. It's it's two groups, and I think that one that you just mentioned is the biggest group. It's people who are basically looking for a backup plan. They're um, happy-ish to continue where they're living at the moment in places uh, like the US or um uh, pretty much mainly the US but there's also some other countries like um like South Africa and they they want a, to like you say to be able to hop over to Europe if they really need to um and to have that uh, um security the second um group of people then that i uh, see occasionally is people who they have cash to invest but they don't have a passive income like a pension that would allow them to qualify for the d7 so they want to move to portugal they don't have um, a pension or they're not working remotely or any of the um other visas that qualify for or the other types of visas they could qualify for in portugal but with um cash to invest they are able to qualify for the golden visa um yep. So those are, uh, yeah, the two the two main ones that I see um, uh, benefiting from that. Um, uh, so uh, another question, uh, some clarifications here. Um, uh, James it says his husband is an EU citizen. He is not an EU citizen. Um, would he apply for the golden visa himself? Um, so uh do you know anything about that uh jason um the answer is yes james you you would apply for the golden visa just for yourself it wouldn't it wouldn't be any benefit to your husband um but if if you are married to an eu citizen to be fair you should have the benefits of an eu passport um so my, my understanding is yeah if, if you are married to an eu citizen You've got me you've got me kind of questioning that now i mean certainly in the country which your husband is resident and a national of you would certainly have rights there i'm pretty i'm pretty sure you would have the same rights to the rest of europe as well um, uh, yeah there is an article on um portugalist i'll see if i can send it over the basically if you have um if you're in eu citizenship and you have uh, um, a spouse um, and certain family members, they can move over um, with you to Portugal. Um, I think in terms of getting citizenship, it depends on the country. I know um, Ireland, for example, where I'm originally from, you now need to live there. Um, some countries might not require you to do that. But in terms of moving to Portugal, you could move to Portugal as the um, the spouse of an EU citizen. Um so I will try and get that article over to uh, James. Um, and um, I've just remembered what Margot was referring to, James. Okay, the, perfect. The GRP it was actually a very bad, very bad abbreviation for the Golden Visa itself. It's the uh, the Portugal Golden Residence Permit Program. Um, so it's a, specifically Margot. Yeah, it is. It's just a reference to the the program itself. But as far as uh, family members, um, I'll just share that slide for a moment, just to come back for a moment. Um, uh, family, family, family. Okay, so yeah, family members, so you can include a partner, married or unmarried is fine, children up to the age of 21 or older if they're in full-time education, and uh, yes, parents above the age of 65. Uh, no problem. And uh, if they're younger than 65, still possible as well. We just need to prove 
dependency, but hopefully, hopefully that answers uh, Michael's question. Hope that's okay. Any other questions, Michael? Of course, yeah, just make, drop me an email and I'll, I'll go through them with you. I think, uh, yeah, uh, I th hopefully that answers it. Margo was saying thank you. So um, that actually, uh, I think that rounds up all the questions that we've had. We got through at least 38 of them, plus uh, the ones that people had asked before. And um, I think the best thing now for anybody who has any more questions would be to get in touch with you directly, Jason. If they do that, um, will they get an answer by email or are you able to set up a call with them? Yeah, but best thing, uh, I'm, I'm kind of just very reactive to, to what's in my, my diary at the moment. So best thing is always just to book a call. There's no fee to, to speak one-to-one. -one. We can go through all the questions that you have. We can look at the investments. We can do a personalized cost breakdown for things like the government fees and legal fees. So yeah, if you just drop me an email either with your availability, like I say, you can scan the, scan the screen to go straight to my diary as well. Um, and uh, otherwise, yeah, if it's just the odd question, you can drop me an email and uh, I should come back to you as soon as I can. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, thank you, um, Jason, so much for answering uh, all of these questions and talking us through the Golden Visa process and changes and NHR and everything that's been going on. It's been quite a lot of information and I know people have been very confused for um for the best part of about a year now with all the different announcements that have been going on so uh thank you for bringing some clarity to that um and hopefully uh, speak to you again sometime soon to um discuss any new developments in golden visas and nhr and everything else yeah definitely we could maybe do one over the christmas break james i'll uh, put my santa outfit on keep it keep okay it. that keep sounds it good <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for, uh, for having a run. And good to, to chat with you again. I shall speak to you soon. And thanks everyone for joining. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, James Bunny.